Hi, it's Friday, October the 21st, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Today it's Romans 12, 9 to 21. Um, I really sort of stop right in the middle of Paul doing some really good preaching. Um, and uh, Paul invited us uh, to offer our bodies as living sacrifice, also uh, to use our gifts as part of the body of Christ. Um Paul told us not to conform to the world. Uh, really good stuff. At least I thought it was good stuff. Loved it. And uh, Paul continues. I just didn't want to put it all into one meditation. So, so here we go. We'll let Paul continue. Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. <laughs> Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh, Paul, 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 Paul. I would love to hear him say these words so that I could pick up what is sarcastic and what is not sarcastic and what is fun and not fun. Um, at the end there, he said, you know, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I'll repay, says the Lord. Some people hear that and they go, yeah, I'm just going to sit back and God's going to smite them, smite them good. And they get excited about waiting for it. And they're rather gleeful when bad things happen because they see that as God smiting those people. I think Paul is not saying it that way. He's saying never avenge yourselves, but leave yourself, leave room for the wrath of God. You know, because it's written, vengeance is mine and I'll repay, says the Lord. So, so yeah, no, 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 you don't have to do it. Leave room. Leave room for the wrath of God. Just back off. Don't worry about it. Because then the quote continues, No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. And if they're thirsty, give them something to drink. <laughs> Wait a minute. But I want... I mean, I, if, they're, if they're eating and drinking while God's smiting them, that doesn't seem right. No, no. If there's vengeance to be had, let God do that. You worry about the things you can do. You can feed. You can give drink to the thirsty. You can care for people. But, Paul says as a little aside, I think, by doing this, you'll heap burning coals on their heads. <laughs> so, I mean, is Paul mocking me for wanting vengeance and saying, no, Norm, that, that's the kind of coals you got to heap on people. You know, the kind that they can eat and drink. Or is Paul saying, you know, the best revenge is not letting them get to you because it makes them crazy when you're kind to them. I'm not sure what Paul means by that. I have had occasions for me personally, but also I have advised people in communities when dealing with somebody who has become an enemy, whether they deserve to be an enemy or not, doesn't matter. They are a burr, they are a problem, they are a constant conflict, they are antagonistic. And I have said, well, let's just love them to death. What do you mean love them to death? Well, we'll just love them. We'll love them so they change. Or we'll love them so much they can't stand to be around us and they'll leave us alone. It's worked. <laughs> it isn't as immediately satisfying as smiting somebody. Um, but it's worked. So I wonder whether Paul is talking about that same thing. I mean, that's the way you, that's the way you, 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 you heap coals on, on their heads. I mean, if you think about it, heaping coals on, on, on the heads of somebody is, is what you do to protect your battlements, right? You're under attack. You want the attack to end. So you, you, you heap coals on their heads because uh, that makes them 
run away, leave you alone. I don't think you're heaping coals on their heads because it's so exciting to hear them scream in pain. So I think God is saying, you know what, if you want to get through this conflict, Paul is saying, if you want to get through this conflict, feed them. Take care of them. And either what was causing the conflict will go away, because basically if we're hungry, we just want to be fed. If we're thirsty, we just want to drink. So if you do those things, then then the, the reason for their aggression will be gone. So you'll solve the problem. Or... You'll so infuriate them because they haven't been able to get your goat that they'll leave. Seems like good advice. <laughs> but so is all of this, really. Like, let, let love be genuine. Okay, of course. Everyone says that. Yes, of course, let love be genuine. And always, if there's someone that we love, we say, you know, I really love you. You know, as opposed to that pretend love that I do with other people. Um... But that is a real thing, right? There is pretend love. We pretend to love something that we don't really love. We pretend to love a movie that we think that we should like or we want to. We we pretend to revel in our successes, even though late at night we worry, oh, am I doing the right thing? Am I ever going to get off this treadmill? Yes, I'm doing great. I, I love my job. Do you really, though? Honestly, do you? So let love be genuine. Like, if you love something, be say so. And if you don't love something, then don't claim to love it. That, that it, 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 You don't damn it by not loving it publicly. But you hurt yourself by pretending to, I think. So let love be genuine. And, 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 and hate what is evil. So I don't know that hate means I have to hold up a sign or throw rocks. But hate means I want to separate myself out from it. So those things that are evil, separate yourself out from them want to do the right thing you know just then separate yourself out from that which is evil and hold fast to that which is good you know but the truth is many of us hold fast to what is evil even if it's mildly evil there are things in our lives that are not healthy they are not good for us they are not life-giving and we we hang on to them because we're supposed to because we're not going to give in I have one son in particular uh, who, who does not like to back up on anything. So if he makes a commitment to a thing, he is going to stay with it. Because he said so. And that has led him to two very damaging relationships. Um, that were really hard on him and painful on him. Because even if early on he recognized, I'm not saying that, that my son's partners were evil, um, well, as his dad, maybe I am. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, what I'm saying, though, is that the relationship was not healthy, was not good, and he knew it, but he's not going to back up, so he just held tighter. He held on to that which is evil. Instead of trusting himself, instead of trusting God and going, this isn't good for me, I'm letting it go. But if you let it go, you might be a failure. you got to see it through till it works. No, don't do that. Let go what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Remember the first part of this reading, which was yesterday. Um, don't conform to the world. So there are things in your life that are not life-giving, that, 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 that are draining the life from you, even though everyone says, oh, you should keep doing that. Paul uses dramatic language here, but hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Do the good things. Don't, don't do the, the not good things. Stop that. Love one another with mutual affection. So for me, and this is just me, it's the way that with these words, the way these words strike me. Um, love one another with mutual affection, meaning I love you, you love me. He then goes on to say, outdo one another in showing honor. So he's taking the way the world works, which makes means everything's a competition and you need to win and saying, okay, if you want to play that, but don't conform to the world exactly. Love one another with mutual affection and outdo one another in showing honor. In other words, don't look to beat somebody for a victory. Just look to love them so much that it feels almost like a competition. 
have so much zeal for for for, for this person that that, that, it, that it, it it it's revealed in honor. Not in yay I win you lose, but in yay you're magnificent, and I got to show you that. But what really struck me though is. Love one another a mutual affection means that it's meant to be mutual. So it's not just you loving someone else. And I don't know this has to be a, a single, you know, romantic, life-shaping love. It can be a friendship, too. It can be love for all sorts of different people. Um, but to do it with mutual affection, which means you also have to be open to them loving you. I've already done my psychoanalysis of Paul earlier. Um, but if I were Paul's friend, um, I would wonder how, how open Paul was to letting people love him. I think he's preaching to himself here a little bit. Just the way he says things all sound very familiar to me. To me, someone who also has had to work at letting people love me. It's a part of me that's always kind of felt, wow, if I let you love me, I'm being weak. Because I guess I need you. If I need you, then I'm not as strong as I would be if I didn't need you. But here Paul's reminding me that that's not what strength is. That's not what love is. It is about mutual affection. I have to open myself up to being loved. It's hard. Then I think Paul's saying, you know, take all of that. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. All that stuff that you would do to, to succeed in life. Uh, to make your business thrive, to be number one, to win the game, to whatever it is, do all of that, but do that in service of God. Competitive spirits are great is a great thing. And, and, and you know, uh, we all have gifts and some of us, it's like, yeah, we just have to go, go, go. We're very competitive. Great. But do that in service because that's how you serve the Lord, right? Do it in service. Um, do it for others, not for yourself. And that's an interesting way of looking at things. You know, I, there's a number of things that I do that I say, well, I'll just shut that off. Um, uh, I get angry sometimes. Well, I can get angry on behalf of other people. I don't have to stop being an angry person. <laughs> I, I like being angry sometimes. But I'm just angry for myself. It's a selfish anger. Guy, Paul's saying, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. No, no, that's to me. That's part of the art and spirit. Like you, you like being angry, then fine. But be angry for the hungry. Be angry for the disenfranchised. Be angry for the oppressed and the and the ignored. Be angry for them. I I remember being in in a conversation. Uh, I I have a a, a role of of some uh, authority. Uh, and a group was presenting to me um, it's, 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 uh, on an issue. It doesn't matter what the issue is. Uh, but the issue uh, is very tied into racism and, 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 and looking at trying to fix a problem. And as it was explained to me, I recognized the problem and their point was correct. And I said to them, I agree completely with you. I, this makes me angry as well. To which the person presenting said, I appreciate that, Norman, but I don't think you're angry enough. And he may have been right. I got angrier. Um, but I think there's a place to use that, to use our anger. Um, and, and to use our energy and to use those things we have that those things that 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 we have often used um, to succeed in the world. But as we stop conforming to the world, we can still use them. We just we reapply them. We refocus them. At least I think that's what Paul is saying. That, that, that's how it strikes me. I love rejoice and hope, he says. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. These are the things that get us through hard times. When we find those things that are hopeful, we rejoice in them. We hold them up. We, we recognize them. You know, um, and, 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 and where we're struggling, we are patient in, in that we are waiting. We, we, we know, we believe that we are not, we were not created to, to only to suffer. Suffering is part of the plan for all of us. We all suffer at different times, but that isn't, that isn't the be all and end all of our lives. So we're patient in our suffering, knowing that it is not forever. And we persevere in prayer, which means to say, 
for me anyway, persevering prayer means you keep doing it. You keep praying. You pray when you are rejoicing and you pray when you are suffering. And most people I know do one or the other. Sometimes in my life, I have switched being the person, you know, but when things are going great, I am praying. Oh, I'm thanking God all the time. This is fantastic. God, thank you. I'm in prayer. I'm in communication with God about it all the time. I am rejoicing in prayer. And then a bad thing happens. And then I find myself suffering or people that I love are suffering. And I am angry at God and I stop praying. And then there are those, and I've often been this person as well, who is very good at, at, at praying in, in the times of suffering when things are hard and I'm talking to God about it every day and I'm recognizing God in this situation and that situation and this is difficult but I can see God's presence and it assures me and sometimes I'm able to share that with others and and that's a good thing. And then we have a great success and we want to have a great party for our great success and I am happy and I don't even think for a second, you know, I ought to thank God for this success. I mean, I don't necessarily sit there in the middle of the party going, wow, I did all this. But I forget God's presence sometimes in those joyful, hopeful moments. Persevere in prayer is, is an invitation for me to always pray. In the great times, in the hard times, and in all the in-between times. And then he says an obvious one, contribute to the needs of the saints. Saints are, are, uh, saints are the people who are, who are in the church. The faithful are the saints, okay? They're not Simon Templar, if you're old like me, you know who that is. Um, they're not the white-robed perfect people uh, in, in whose name miracles happen. Um, no, what Paul just means is the church. So contribute to the, to the needs of the church community. But, Paul also adds, extend hospitality to strangers. Don't let it end there. Yes, be good to your family, but also be good to the people down the street. Be good to the stranger. Be good to the people you don't even know yet. So let that hospitality that you, that thing you feel, that love you feel within family, within close community, let that same thing get outside of community, Paul says. And now once you've got that, you gotta if you're if you're gonna extend hospitality to strangers, okay. Now you're ready for the big stuff. <sighs> bless those who persecute you. Seriously, bless them, don't curse them. That's what Paul says. You're like, really? Because the people that persecute me, I, I pretty much hate them. <laughs> no. Bless them. Do not curse them. You ever done that? Have you ever prayed for somebody that you despised or somebody that despised you? Somebody who was unfair to you? And let's face it, we all have those people in our lives. People who are horribly unfair to us, unjust, absolutely wrong. People that if they no longer lived in your community, you would feel your community was better. Have you ever prayed for them? And in praying, I don't mean, please God, Make Alice change her mind and stop her from being so mean to me. Not that prayer. Bless Alice. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for Alice's gift in our community. Have you ever done that while Alice was trying to, you know, mess up your life? Have you ever done that? I have. It's made all the difference. You know, it's hard for me to hate somebody when I'm praying for them. When I'm actually blessing them. It's hard for me to hate them. And I find I start to let go of my hatred for them. And when I let go of my hatred for them, I find that their attacks on me seem less personal. They don't bother me as much. And, and the temperature of our conflict, of our tension, seems to go down and go away. I don't know if this is holy word. It is good advice. I recognize it. And then basically, Paul just says, like, Sir, just live in the world. You know, it's, don't let the world be trans. Don't, don't let the world, <coughs> excuse me, don't conform to the world. We said that yesterday. Um, but be transformed. But still live in the world. 
right? So, so hold fast to what is good. Just separate yourself from the bad stuff and hold fast to what is good, right? And bless those who persecute you. I know it's tough, but then he says, and then rejoice with those who rejo rejoice. Like where there's a party, go to the party. Weep with those who weep. Don't be afraid of, 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 of people's pain. It's okay. You can be there with them. It will not destroy you. Weep with those who weep. Live a full emotional life. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. And do not claim to be wiser than you are. Basically, he's just saying, don't be a jerk. Don't be full of yourself. We are all created by God. We are all people with feelings, emotions, gifts, needs. All of us. None of us better than the other. So remember that. Remember that. And, and the times that it's hard to remember that, you know, like when someone does something crappy to you, don't add fuel to the fire by responding with evil for evil. Right? That's what he says. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. Take the high road. Take the high road. And then the last line that I'll look at before I give you a break. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. I appreciate the human wisdom in that. I appreciate that Paul may have tapped into divine wisdom in that as well. Basically, the commandment here, the recommendation, the plea, actually this is a plea, we get to choose, is to live peaceably with all. But... Paul recognizes that sometimes that's impossible. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you. So if there is something you can do to live peaceably, then absolutely do it. If that maniac only wants to destroy you, okay, get out of their way. Get out of their way. Do what you have to do to make them stop. But if it's possible, live peacefully. I like that. Um, it not only invites me to a choice, but it invites me to apply myself. Because I'll tell you what I have discovered is that uh, I have I have been in situations with people where it was impossible to make them happy. It was impossible to to bring our conflict to get out of conflict. We were going to we were going to be in conflict until one of us lost. And 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 I have had that time that I could not find the way out, and so I have retreated. But then later I've been able to come back and find a way to resolve the conflict because I now know more. I know more, I know more about myself. I now have more skills, more ability, more understanding. Um, and so I recognize I have a role in living peaceably. It's not just like, oh, well, can't be done. Or yes, it's obvious it can't be done. No, no, I can learn. So it can't be done today, but it might be done tomorrow. And, and I want to keep coming back to finding that way that we can live peaceably. But also understand that sometimes it isn't possible. If it is possible... It says, yeah, which means sometimes it isn't, which of course would just take me back to God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. It's a good prayer. Um, anyway, I have just basically just gone through this passage and preached it. I did not wonder about it as much as I maybe should have. But it's good preaching by Paul, and I just wanted to play with it for a while. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to offer a prayer. So let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this time of wondering. Let our wondering be genuine, just as our love is genuine. Let us not pretend, but let us be honest with you, with our questions, our doubts, our joys. Let us never be afraid to rejoice or afraid to weep. And let us always, God, persevere in prayer. Let us keep talking to you. God, we ask that this time of wondering be a time of prayer, a time when we have been talking to you. We pray in the name of Jesus. 
through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And with that, we will call it a week, and I wish you a very, very good weekend. Please, this weekend, spend some time loving genuinely. Separate yourself out from the, the, the stuff that isn't life-giving, and just hold fast to what's good. Revel in it, and know that God is reveling with you. God bless you. Know that God sees you, and God loves you. And know that the world is different because of you. God's love moves through you into the world. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. God bless.